Hi everybody, this is Michael. This is Carolyn. And this is the Penguin Coffee Clutch. It certainly is. Yes. Okay. And we are sitting on my new couch. It's very comfortable. Yes. So my old couch went kaput. It just... It collapsed. gave up the ghost. Yes. It just collapsed in on itself. The springs weren't <laughs> springy anymore. There were rips in the fabric. It just it just died. This is lovely. Yeah, so it's very comfortable. This is an IKEA couch, and supposedly I like the backdrop. I like the pillows behind it. <laughs> and it's supposedly one of the most reliable couches ever. What does that mean? I don't know. What's reliable couches? I I, I hope it means that it's not going to fall apart and break like our last couch did. Mm. Yeah. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. Sounds good. Shall we say who we are online? Yes, we should. Okay. So I am Aptenonitz. Um, that's A P T E N O K N I T S. And, and I'm C Predmore, but my C, so it's C P R E D M O R. And I'm that on Ravelry and Instagram. And I think that's all the places I am. Mm. Mine's on Ravelry, Instagram, Etsy now. Uh, oh, that's right. Um, I have a sweater's quantity. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I think that's it for me as well. I don't have Facebook. Ah. I don't use Facebook. My boss asked me the other day, how come I didn't friend her on Facebook? Mm. And, I, and she's because I had um, our associate, no, our assistant dean, is one of my friends on Facebook and mm -hmm. apparently has friended the dean also. And I said, I, I think I friended her when she was one of my students. Mm -hmm. So it's been quite a long time. And I said, you really don't want to be my friend on Facebook because all I do mostly is play games. Do you really want to know how much one of your faculty members plays video games on Facebook? Think about this very sincerely. My cousins have even defriended me because apparently the games send notifications. Mm -hmm. Well, I find that invasive, but, you know, I yes. don't know when it's happening. So I explained to her that friending me is just like an exercise in futility because you get all these stupid notifications. Yeah, my parents want me to use Facebook. I do not want to use Facebook. Well, I don't post anything on Facebook. I yeah, don't put pictures. Yeah, I don't, I don't either. Uh, when I... When I had a Twitter feed a long time back, I did have a Facebook page because then I could just automatically post the Twitter to the Facebook and it was like, that was actually kind of useful. Mm. That was a good Twitter feed. I, I missed that. It was... Um, Why'd you give it up? Uh, things just, life just got in the way, I guess. But it, it was basically microbe or virus of the, it was either day or week. I think it was week. <laughs> no, it was day. It was microbe of the day. Um, and I would, I would post about a microbe and link various articles on that microbe so people could learn about the microbe. Nice. And Very I interesting. Had up to like 500 followers in the end. Wow. Mm. Well, I have a Twitter handle, but I don't think I've used it in a year. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so uh, Rhinebeck's coming up. I'm going up tomorrow. Yes, I'm going up Saturday. I'll be there Saturday, too. Mm. But tomorrow's a class in natural dyeing. Mm. I have a feeling we're going to be dyeing with marigold or something. I'm not quite sure what we're doing. I learned all sorts of things about natural dye the other day. Do, do, do you know that uh, there is a dye, a red dye made up of ground up bugs that live on, Virginia. yeah, mm -hmm. that, that live on pear cacti leaves plants. It's cochineal, and um, I don't know that I've ever used it, but somehow that's stuck in my brain. Yeah. Um, I don't know what we're going to be using, but I think I come home with two skeins, so I'm excited yeah. about that. Well, it's apparently what's used in food coloring. So, oh. So, so anyone in with their red food coloring or anyone with red colored or pink colored food is probably eating ground up bug powder. They say it's very healthy. Mm. I mean, ants, well, well, ants unless crickets, etc. Unless you're allergic to it. Well, that's true. But, you know... <laughs> You're not allergic to it. 
You but, mean, you know, they tell you that, they, you know, ants and, and crickets, etc. will be the next big thing, so. I don't think ants would be great to eat because they have all this little? acid in their system. Uh, but crickets are good eats from what I hear. I'm holding off mm. for the moment. I have swallowed a mosquito. Mm. Well, I don't, and I can't recommend it. <laughs> well, I don't think I would eat a live cricket. I think I would eat a roasted cricket. Well, this one flew in my mouth. Yes. <laughs> I didn't have a whole big choice here. Yes. So, so yes, I'm going out tomorrow. It's an all-day class in natural dyeing, so I'll be able to report back on what I've learned mm -hmm. the next time we podcast. I'm going up with no expectations, so that way I won't be disappointed. And um, I didn't want to do a mm. lot of uh, preliminary work because I want the person who's teaching the class to have the freedom to direct the class. So I, I'm going up and I'm prepared to be amazed. Um, and then I'll be <clears throat> down here on Friday. And then we're going back up Friday afternoon and then staying the weekend. And then um, back late on Sunday. So, so you have to work Friday afternoon? <clears throat> I have to work Friday morning. Oh, geez. I have class at 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm. So I have an 8, 9... It's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock, and then office hours from 11 to 12. Feels like this happens to you every year. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, my daughter can't leave until the afternoon anyway, so I'm going to be mm. at school until um, she gets up to me. Mm. So um, I'm picking up her suitcase after this, and then I'll just cart it around the car. That way she won't have to bring it on the subway. Mm. So Makes sense, yeah. We're getting, that's our pre-planning for, for Ryan Beck. And I started making a list of things I wanted to get. Um, I mean, there's traditional dyers who um, have specific colors for the events they go to. So, you know, Dragonfly uh, now has a Ryan Beck colorway. Right. Miss Babs traditionally has a Ryan Beck colorway. Right. Um, so I want to get some, some of those. And I was realizing that in my pattern queue that I've got a number of things that require either sport weight or DK. Mm -hmm. So I thought instead of loading up heavy in uh, fingerings, that maybe I'd, I'd, I'd get to some sport weight. Um, and so pick up some of those things in sport weight. I'm hoping that we get up there early enough to go to the Indy Dyers meetup in Kingston. Right. Um, I've not been there before. And I thought that would be interesting. Um, well, I'm definitely missing that. Mm. So we'll see what what I find. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. I have a few things I brought that I've been working on. I didn't know whether you wanted to show them or not. Yeah, we can talk about what we've been working on. I, I have a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, my wife uh, finished this hat. Pretty. Um, that's what you dyed. Yes, and it is made out of my yarn. Um, this is a one of a kind. Mm -hmm. um, Are there fall colors? Kind of looks like a tiger. Mm hmm. It does. That's nice. I like it. Yes. Very, very hatty. Very hatty. <laughs> yes. Well, I don't know whether I had shown this before, but this was, it's called a spa cloth. And I made it out of fingering wool. Actually, I believe it is neighborhood fiber because I got it at Knit, our mm. local yarn store, mm. and it's a great gradation, great gradated. It's a group from light to darker gray. Oh, okay. And I had bought the whole thing to like, make like an ombre or, or say a gradient. Well, there's different skeins. Okay. Okay, so. The different skeins create the gradient. Okay. Okay. So I didn't want to just plain, make a plain scarf for my dad for Christmas. So what I'm going to do is I've got this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up the bottom and knit up to, you know, to make the scarf and then do one of these on the other end. Yeah. I think that'll be nice. Yeah, I think so too. I, I think, think that, that'll be a very nice pattern. Yeah, I was, so that's the plan here. I was uh, 
looking at uh, the Vogue Knitting Fall issue, and they have this scarf for uh, men, and it's made out of chunky weight yarn. It's really big and really long, and you can wrap it around and tie it up. I had the chance to try it on the other day. Did it was, you? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So. Something that they'd used large needles, or had they finger knitted, or what? Uh, large needles, uh, large yarn. Nice. So. Well, nice. Then let's see. Um, another thing for my dad, which I'm going to have to make three more, but this is my boat. Can you see the boat? Yes, I can see the boat. I don't know if anybody else can see the boat. Um... I don't know. I don't think so. All right. Well, there is a boat. There is a sailboat uh, right there. It's right, <coughs> it's right there. See? Right there. Well, maybe here's the mast. Can you see it this way? Oh, there. I think I see it yeah, that way. Yeah, you kind of see it there. So anyway, uh, this was um, something I did as a test knit. And it's not quite as big as I thought it was going to be. I mean, it covers my lap, but he generally wiggles in the chair and on the sofa and stuff. So what I'm thinking of doing is making three more. And so I have two panels this way and two panels this way. Okay. So make a four square mm. out of the whole thing. Mm. And it's, um, I made this out of Malabrigo. So I will do that again. And uh, I think it'll be quite warm. I'm really pleased with that. What else have you got? We'll take uh, turns. <laughs> the only other thing I really have is my scarf here. I love that scarf. Which As is we knock over the lamp. Which is almost finished. It is. It's huge. And I believe I will end it in a couple of inches. Um, and wear it to Rhinebeck. <gasps> Fantastic. So, so I'm looking forward. To that. This will be a well noticed scarf. Well, it was very well noticed at that Vogue knitting event I was talking about because I was working on it. Everybody there came up to me to, to look at that scarf. It was, it, was, it was crazy. I'm not surprised. It pops. I mean, it, it's really a beautiful color combination, and then the, the design, the work in the design is really very, it's gorgeous. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then this is a top that I'm making out of that yarn that I had hand dyed from Neighborhood Fiber. Mm -hmm. And I have finished the first skein. I have started the second skein, but I mean just started the second skein. So the rest of the body is going to be have a slightly darker cast because right. this is the one that had the most yellow. Right. And then I'm going down to the middle yellow and then to the, the least yellow. Um, so I figured this will be like another month because really, I've got another something on the needle. It's really interesting how it came out. It looks like almost it is like a self-striping. Almost. Um, it really does nice, nice broad stripes yeah, when, when, once the sleeves came off. Yeah, that's really impressive. I really, um, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Um, and it's got some really nice deep... Um, yeah. blues in it. So yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see what this one does because this one ha actually has some navy in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that will be interesting. So I like the way it goes from turquoise to a deeper blue. But then I'm also working on my Victorian dressing gown. I had to frog the whole thing. Oh. Oh my goodness. The, the pattern was just, I had, I, you know, I would like to find a time when I would read a pattern and my hands would do what I'm reading. Hmm. It, it's a goal of mine because I was reading the pattern, but I wasn't doing the pattern. I don't know what I was doing, but obviously it was not right. And this is an interesting pattern because the pearl side is the right side. Oh, that's what we'll okay. show. And actually that's where you get these, what look to be like, I don't know, channels? Ridges. Stripes. I call whatever. them ridges. Um, so I have finished one skein, and I'm almost finished the second skein. So I have just short of 300 yards in. So I'll probably finish that second skein tonight and start the third. 
and uh, it goes relatively quickly. It's just that I have been, we've had a bit of car trouble, mm. and so various cars have been shuffling in and out of the fix-it place. Mm -hmm. It's not the fix-it place's fault. Mm -hmm. It's just, anyway, so, you know, when you're moving cars around, it takes a lot of time out of your life. Just saying. So... I have not had the time to work on it this week as I thought I would, um, but it's coming along. I'm quite pleased with it, very pleased. So I figure by the end of the weekend, maybe I'll get through the third, maybe the fourth uh, skein. The skeins are only 50 grams. Oh, okay. So, um, so it's 154 yards of skein. So I'm hoping to have 600 yards done by the end of the weekend. I mean, it, it's it's... A very easy pattern once your fingers do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's it's going you know rather well. I'm quite pleased with that. And that's my story. <laughs> <laughs> and as I said, I'm getting ready for Rhinebeck. Um, yeah. Um, my Rhinebeck plan is a little more simple. Um, I'm hoping to meet a lot of people and stalk a lot of people and find a lot of people and say hello to those people. And I'm hoping to take some of my one-of-a-kind skeins yarn to and, the... And give them oh, to them? Or? Yes. And go to the podcaster meetup and say, hi, I like you. Here's a skein. Right. <laughs> Sounds good. Where is that podcaster meetup? It's on the big hill. On what day? On Saturday? Saturday at 1. At 1. I probably have a class. Mm. I have an afternoon class on Saturday. I just don't know. I think maybe they start at 2. I have to look it up. Mm -hmm. I have to see. Um, so I have a class on Thursday and I have a class Saturday afternoon. Interestingly, I originally had a class on Saturday morning and one on Sunday morning. But this year, for the first time, they canceled two classes. Oh, wow. So, I mean, I got a refund, but I thought that was odd. Yeah. Speaking of classes, I have some really big news. Do tell. I will be teaching at um, the Vogue Knitting Live New York in come January. I think that's incredibly exciting. Yes, it is. What very do you plan exciting. to do? Uh, it's it's going to be uh, simple knit and purl. How to cast on? Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. That's, that's exactly what they want after after I've been in three issues of, of double knitting with, with either lace or cables or both. Well, you do have to cast on for that. That is true. <laughs> but it, 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 but I, 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 I use a special two-color cast on. Oh, nice. So, and then, Seriously, what are you going to be doing? Uh, it's uh, a two-part class, double knit cables and lace. Um, on Sunday, if anyone's I checking. believe that scarf that you were showing earlier is what is pictured. Yeah, I mean, I sent them a lot of pictures, so they chose some. Um, and I definitely sent them pictures of the scarf. Yeah, yeah. tickets are already up for sale for the two largest packages. Um, generally, I go and, and get a combination of things. Um, <clears throat> Uh, this year, though, I'm not planning on going to the dinner, and I'm not nothing against the dinner, but I've got the food allergies, and they're just getting a little bit worse every year. Mm. And I just hate fighting for my dinner. I mean, mm. it's just because you have to keep telling them. First, you accost them, you know, within the first 10 minutes where you're there when you're registering, and say, oh, no, by the way, I have this, and I have this, and I have this. Can you make arrangements for dinner? And they nod their head yes and forget. Um, and then you... Uh, you know, get to them later in the day when things have calmed down a little bit and say, by the way, I'd like to reiterate that I need such and such. And then by Saturday night, you're chasing the waiters down uh, to make sure that you get what, you know, the plate that you need. Mm -hmm. And I just went, you know, I'm not really not sure I want to fight for my dinner. So that's one thing. And then secondarily, you can't buy a dinner, t you can't just buy a dinner ticket. Mm -hmm. Well, my husband tends to like to come in on Saturday. Right. So to for me to get a ticket that includes dinner means the poor guy standing out in the hallway. Yeah. Which I don't think is a really good plan. Yeah, that that seems a little yeah. off. Yeah. You know, and he's not a knitter, so to buy a, a a ticket that says you take three classes and this that and the other and get dinner, that doesn't make any sense at all. So um, last year I was lucky 
and um, last year, yeah, last year, uh, there was a woman in my class who apparently had gotten one of the large tickets and couldn't go to the dinner, so I was uh, able to get a ticket from her. But it's not something you can plan on, no. and I, I really don't want my weekend to go like that. So I'm waiting for some of the smaller uh, combinations of tickets to go on sale, mm -hmm. um, and they haven't just as yet. But for those people who are really interested in one of those two larger tickets, I they're up and you can, you know, certainly go in and pick all your classes and you'll probably pick the classes I want to pick and I won't be able to be there. But, <laughs> you know, it's, um, I find that Vogue Knitting Live is really an exciting place to be. Um, so I, I can't wait till they open up the classes and they should be opening up soon because the early bird stops, I think, as of November 8th. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and they have prices for the smaller bunches of tickets, so I, I, they must be getting ready to open them up. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm waiting for that to re, to order all my classes, and I have a free class. So remember, I won yeah. the raffle. Yeah, I remember. So um, that's also very exciting. Yes. Yes. Um, so I've I've kind of made a list. I'm looking to. You know what I like about these things. These yarn events. What's that? Um, I like the the opportunity to explore. Um, so, for example, there's a class in Japanese knitting. In other words, the Japanese patterns, and apparently they're very graphic oriented. Okay. Um, and so there's this woman who's got a class in basic Japanese knitting to show us how to work with the charts that they have and and some of the symbols and. Uh, because she says most of their, almost all their patterns are one page because they rely on symbology. Mm -hmm. So, who knew? So, I, you know, I think that that'll be kind of exciting. And then for Rhinebeck, I mean, dyeing with natural dyes. I yes. have no idea what that means, but it could be that I'm going to start going out and looking for clovers to, like, mash up or daffodils or God knows what. I'm going to the desert. Yes, and, you know, getting my own supplies to mash up for dyes. And mm. It's just an opportunity to explore a lot of different avenues um, and learn a lot. And I think that makes knitting, the knitting adventure exciting. So, so I think we've segued already into today's topic. Yes, I think so. Which is um, advantages and benefits of knitting events. Maybe Well, one of the disadvantages is the enormous too. haul of yarn that I usually come home with. Yeah, I mean, that that's true, because at knitting events, you're usually, I mean, you're, there, there, there's just so much there. It's really hard to resist the temptation to not buy everything. It is, because you can see all kinds of possibilities, and it's absolutely fantastic. And, and you see the broad array of what is there. I mean, um, we were in England, what, two summers ago for a conference, and uh, we happened to go climbing on Glen Cather, which is a 2,000-foot-tall hill um, in Lancashire. And on the hill, we met the Hertford sheep, <laughs> where the, the farmers yeah. bring them in once a year to shear them and then let them back out again. And at some point, I mean, and at, at Rhinebeck, you can buy yarn from, from Herdy, you know, the Hertford sheep. Mm -hmm. I, it's like, wow, I might have been playing with this one. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a very, I would imagine it's a very, um, not necessarily tough, but, but strong yarn. Mm -hmm. Since those sheep are out in all kinds of weather. Um, and so there's, there's examples, I think, of almost every kind of fiber, which I, I see as mind-boggling. Um, it, yes. You can just learn all kinds of things. Yes, yes. Um, and and the opportunity to see some tools that you might not see on a regular basis. I'm thinking of circular sock machines, sock knitting machines. Yeah, I don't think you see those very often. No, um, but Amy Detchen, who I've met at uh, Vogue Knitting Live, says that up where she is, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. um, They've got a bunch of them, and so yeah, their knitting group is have people that get together with their circular sock needles, and and they do all kinds of stuff. So now the, these these are the bigger events, I would say, that you would see these things because they're they're yes. 
smaller knitting events where I don't think you'd see quite as many things. True. You'd see perhaps a, a little bit more of, um, I wanted to say homegrown industry, but all of this is homegrown industry. I think you'd see more of a really specialist dyers in, in some of the smaller markets. Yeah. Um, and again, you could see some specialist sheep, you know, yarn from, you know, very interesting breeds of sheep. Yeah, possibly um, local. Local sheep. Yeah. Uh, so it, it just gives an opportunity to just learn um, a, a, vi a wide variety of things. And yeah. I just really treasure it. So I, it's very exciting. And don't forget the people. I mean, these events bring so many people together. You can meet people from all over the country, all over the world in some cases. Um, oh, absolutely. And, of course, you can meet some famous knitters and take classes with them. Yes, um, yes. I mean, that that's particularly true of Vogue Knitting Live, I think, mm -hmm. <clears throat> where you can sort the available classes by the teacher. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, I plan, uh, we've got Stephen West coming this year. Yes. And I do intend is, to try to sign up for one of his classes. I believe he's in the same time slot I am. So it's... He has several. Okay. Um, so okay. I'm going to be taking, I hope, him on Friday. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> because I don't have to teach that Friday. So I'll be in, in Vogue Knitting Live, hopefully, on that Friday. And, um, I, I mean, there's just Susan Anderson. There's just... All these people that, you know, you hear about, they're going to be there. Yeah. Um, so I, it's, I think, an incredible adventure. What are you looking forward to doing besides teaching your class? At Vogue Knitting Live. Um, again, meeting people and making <coughs> connections is what I like to do at these types of events. Because I don't really buy yarn. I'm a designer. I go and I, I, I uh, find yarn companies and yarn dyers and I make connections with them and then mm -hmm. they give me yarn so I get free yarn in order to do patterns. So I'm, I'm looking at it from a very different perspective than most people um, because mm -hmm. I'm, not re I'm not really there to shop. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, I think I'd like to take some classes at some point in my life. Um, although the problem is I learn more uh, from online than I do from any knitting class. So it's, it's I mean, I don't know if uh, class would even make sense to me. I'm taking a class, Saturday afternoon, I'm taking a class in spindling, so mm -hmm. hand spindling, mm -hmm. or hand, hand uh, spinning, and I've watched all kinds of people online for mm -hmm. that, but I think, what I think is going to happen is I'm hoping that I'll see how people, you know, up close and personal place their fingers to get, like, the tension, and maybe I won't feel as stupid about my spinning mm -hmm. as I do at this particular moment. Um, one year I know we took a spinning class with the spinning wheel and that was fascinating. I mean, all I did was giggle the entire time because mm -hmm. I was having so much fun. Um, I could see becoming Rumpelstiltskin because it was just an incredible amount of fun and it seemed just, just to go flow through my fingers. Um, uh, uh, no. so, I mean, that's fantastic. Another way I learn is through trial and error, and I love learning through trial and error because you can discover so many things that way. Well, that's why I find some of the classes really are helpful because you're able to dip your hand in without buying the equipment. Mm -hmm. So um, I took a class weaving with uh, Liz Gibson, mm -hmm. and um, who I think has been with Interweave Knits, and, and she writes, she's written several books. Right. She's just wonderful. She's really very, very sweet. Uh, one of the best teachers I think I've had. And it just, it was a great afternoon. And, and not only that, but you're talking to the people next to you and they're giving you helpful hints and we're talking about a wide variety of things. And I don't think I would have gotten as interested in hand spinning 
went out sitting next to the woman that I was sitting next to at the weaving class um, that Liz Gibson was giving. She was struggling with the weaving, and I was just having a ball. I made a seven-foot scarf mm -hmm. in that class that I wear now. Well, not now, but later on in the year. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's going, oh, my God, I'm having such trouble and all this other kind of stuff. And, she, and then she started talking about spinning. I said, the way you feel about spinning is how I'm finding the weaving and how you know, I'm find, I, I find spinning about as difficult as you're finding the weaving. And then she was telling me about Turkish spindles. Mm -hmm. And um, that there was a um, a small shop that was usually there at Rhinebeck mm -hmm. to you know look at buying um, some of their uh, Turkish spindles. That I might enjoy those spindles more than the more traditional round spindles, either top, up, or bottom. Um, and I went and I did. I bought a couple of them. And I've been working with them, and now I find that even when I go back to my regular spindles, I'm much better at it than I was before. Mm -hmm. So, of course, it's practice. Yes, a lot of it's practice. Absolutely. And it's also um, got me interested in, um, um, we're starting a research line <laughs> on this, on the idea of artisanal. Okay. And and um, what do various words mean uh, to the consumer when they're used in advertising or to describe mm -hmm. a product? And so right now we're running a um, a survey on Enter, looking at various words, starting off with artisanal, but craftsmanship and and all. We've got about thirty thirty five to fifty words that we're asking people to. You know, word association. You see this word, what do you think of? You know, back and forth. And then, if you saw this word in a description of a product, would this want you? Would this make you want to buy the the product more or less? Sounds fun. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> you know, when we think about artisanal, I mean, we joke about Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and how there's an artisanal bread baker and a, an artisanal candle maker, an artisanal butcher baker, and candlestick maker. Um, it's really a zeitgeist that I think has, has, you know, started really growing and growing and growing. Um, this, this idea that people are making it and by hand and that its value comes from the trueness of the labor. Mm -hmm. Then the, something hit me today that if some, somebody is selling on Etsy, does that make what they're selling fair trade? Because the idea of fair trade is that the maker would be paid a living wage. And if you set the price, as I think people do on Etsy, would that make it possible for everyone who sells on Etsy to be a fair trade maker? No, because not everybody's going to pay those prices. Well, no, not everybody buys, but the people who do buy. Yeah, but, I mean, there's... Etsy is just a sea of yes. competition. Yes. So it's, it's, I think it's really hard. And, and plus, not everyone on Etsy is trying to be fair trade. Um, there are a lot of people there just uh, like looking to buy and sell action figures and stuff. You know. Well, and, because they didn't make them necessarily. Right, right. I was thinking about the ones that have been handmade. The, the, the producers themselves are putting out there. Well, it, and, and in some cases I could see it being a hobby that's just, oh, let me make a little, like back a little bit of my money at this while I'm doing my hobby instead that of... That wouldn't necessarily make it less than fair trade. Well, they wouldn't... If you set an equitable price. Yeah, that's assuming you're setting an equitable price. Well, anyway, I'm starting to look at this. Mm -hmm. I sent my research assistant off to go search in uh, the online databases to see um, what previous research has done. Um, I've gotten a couple hits back, and so she's going to go and collect them. I'll, I'll let you know what the research shows. Okay. <laughs> because when we look at uh, fair trade items like coffee and chocolate, we're often thinking about um, producers in underdeveloped or developing countries, and I'm not sure that the label of fair trade needs to or can only be applied 
to makers in underdeveloped or developing countries. It seems to me that that appellation of fair trade could be put to someone who, as long as you're a maker and you're setting what you feel is a fair price, then why wouldn't the item that you've made be fair trade? Yes, that's true. So anyway, just... Yeah, I think we've gone off so, a well, bit of a but tangent. I think, I think that then, so as an extension, okay, then I think that the items that we buy at these yarn events, mm -hmm. many of them are being sold by the makers. Yes. Then are fair trade items. Yes, I, that 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 there's. Am I bringing it there? Back? There's where I would agree. It's, it's, um, anything just about sold at uh, these events uh, would be fair trade items. I mean, you look at Miss Babb. Mm -hmm. I mean, she is the only dye master at Miss Babb's. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, she and I've had conversations about this. She will, she will, she's the one that makes the recipes. Mm -hmm. She has now, I think, nominated, as of last year, there was one other person on her staff that once she has put these things together, that she'll let them do whatever the magic is, like with, what wave the wand over the tank i'll be okay mm -hmm. it's just a jaw um but basically she's the one that's setting up the recipes and then the rest of them are doing whatever they do and then lifting them up and drying them and doing all this other kind of stuff mm -hmm. so i mean she is the maker and i know you know karita at neighborhood fiber she is the maker i mean yeah, i've seen she, her set up yeah, I'm pretty sure she's the only one doing it uh, as far as dyeing goes. I think as far as the recipes, yes. Yeah. Because um, she she has yeah I've I've seen her set up too. It's it's. It's impressive. Very impressive, and it's, it's, She's got quite a location. Yeah. I mean, I like that twelve burner stove. Mm -hmm. Um, so this so there's creative there's dragonfly which I'm assuming um. You know, it's a group of people that yes. are working together. It's yes. a small group. Yes. I would call them makers also. Yes. So it seems to me that when we go to these, these yarn events, we're talking about fair trade items. So while I do tend to come home with an enormous amount of stuff, I'm bought fair trade. And I can be proud of myself that I'm supporting a very small business owner. And I think that's an important consideration too because... When you look at commerce in America, it's not, our economy is built up on people that are small business people, it's small businessmen that really are the backbone, right. that provide the, um, the service that the individual customer wants, that provide the employment for a great majority of people in the United States. So with going and... Um, frequently and lending support to yarn events, you are certainly supporting um, small businessmen, small entrepreneurs, and, you know, fair trade items. I think it's something to be really proud of. Now, what about the events themselves, like uh, Vogue Knitting Live? That's sponsored by Vogue Knitting. You have to pay tickets for that. I mean... Yeah, because I'm taking classes. Right. Um, I mean, and, the marketplace itself but I, but, but, is but, only... But I mean, so Soho Publishing is making a profit. Uh, even, I mean, the teacher's making a profit, but so is Soho Publishing. I don't. They, they're they the ones who put it together. Yes. I couldn't organize my way out of a paper bag. Right. So, and there's no way I'd be able to get a class with Stephen West. So thank you very much. You know, you're the one who's putting the party together. So, yeah, I mean, they're expending a lot of energy. There's a lot that goes into this organization. And they found you. You're going to be teaching. So I think that, you know, it, I'm not denigrating business being able to make a profit mm. off of this. They've got to have make a profit in order to plow it back into the publication. Mm -hmm. they, people deserve to have a salary. Yes. I think that's incredibly important. So a profit means that your effort is being rewarded. And if they are able to satisfy their consumer base, with the classes that they bring together and the, um, and I'm not sure what you have to pay to get a stall in the marketplace, but the ticket for the marketplace yeah, I think is, it's like a is like $35 to have open access to the largest group of makers in a Vogue knitting line. I mean, the New York Vogue knitting I've heard from people that apparently go from knitting to knitting to knitting is one of the largest events that there is in the circuit. That's I feel incredibly stuff. lucky. Yeah. 
Um, so, no, I think that, you know, being the event planner, that's a job. And it's, then, not, it's not, I mean, most of us make a wedding once in our life, if we're yes, lucky. Yes, yes. Do you remember, I remember those headaches. Oh, my God, I, <laughs> those headaches. And they do this every, and in fact, Vogue Knitting does it at several different places throughout the year. So, yeah. I, I think that. And what, and what about the people that aren't businesses, though, that, that organize these um the smaller get-togethers and get classes lined up and get the indie dyers lined up and all that. That's work. Yeah. Sounds like effort to me. I mean, I don't know if they make, I don't know if they make money at that. Uh, I don't know either. I mean, I don't, I'm going to the indie dyer convention. I'm not sure what it is. Meetup? It's a meetup. Indie mm. dyer meetup at a Best Western in Kingston. Well, that, yeah, yeah. And I don't know what the deal is there. I mean, I'll when I get there, I'll find out if I have to pay to go in. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, it might just be to offset the cost rather than to make a profit. <coughs> which, they're the ones who've decided. Which, 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 which means the organizers, of course, would be getting something out of this. Um, and the other, indie buyers are too. Other than just money. Yes, they're getting some... They're, I would imagine that they are one or more of the indie dyers. And so they're making a marketplace. Mm -hmm. So being able to make a market means bringing consumers to your particular event, your, your stall or location. And by bringing others in, you're making it a destination. I think, I think that's one possibility, yeah. Um, I mean, what about people who aren't indie dyers that organize these events? I mean, what do you think they're getting out of it? I mean, a lot of them like yarns. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so they're, setting, they're setting up their own marketplace to buy they're, yarn. They're, well, because they, they it may, probably, I would think, and I'm only guessing because yeah. you may have been to more of these things than I have. No. Um. I, but I, I know about them from podcasts and stuff. Well, I don't. I know mm. about yarn crawls. I've been on a couple of those. And right. the well, people who yeah. set those up aren't getting squat out of it except... Well, that's not true. Uh, the people who setting up yarn crawls are generally the yarn store owners, and they're getting people... Well, ours to, aren't being to, set up by the yarn store owner. Ken doesn't own yarn. I mean, she's not a store. <laughs> Yeah, but that, she could be, but she's not. But in that case, it's loyalty to the yarn stores. That well, you, yeah, that but that's she's not getting paid. No, she's not getting paid. She's doing it for free because she loves Cheryl. Yeah, so uh, that's friendship. So she's she's paying her friend back for being as accommodating and warm and wonderful as she is. Mm -hmm. We do things for friends. Yes, that's true, and knitters tend to be awesome people. And, and friendly. And friendly. And warm, so, and so, helpful. So you, there is an argument for putting together events simply to give back to the knitting community. You could, and it's certainly a fine argument, but I don't see Vogue Knitting Live doing that. No, I think Vogue Knitting Live is doing it as a business type, of, type of thing, but I, I think the smaller <laughs> ones are more camaraderie. Based. You know, I'm happy that they do it. Yeah. Uh, I have to say that I've, I'm, I continue to learn so much about knitting and crocheting, and I'm, I've got I've got fields of things that I could learn about crocheting because I'm I'm just really good with granny threes. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's just, and then there's there's what's the what is that? Is it Turkish crochet? What is it that Mary does? Tunisian. Tunisian. I knew it was a country. Uh, and it was a T to boot. Yes. So the Tunisian crochet, I mean, there's scads to learn there too. There's just not enough hours in the day. That is true. Um, and I have to say that I, for decades, said I couldn't envision what I would do if I retired. And suddenly I have a vision. I, I can go sailing, and on my boat I can knit, and I can crochet, and I can spin, and I can dye, and I can weave, and drive my husband insane. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Um, I mean, we're going to be, we uh, were down in Annapolis last weekend, which is why we could podcast this last weekend. Right. Um, and we were there because it's the biggest in the water sailboat show on the East Coast. Okay. Um, and... 
Those are gorgeous boats. They're absolutely gorgeous boats. And we got to about half the show because we went out to dinner Friday night and I came back with this. If you think I'm hoarse, I am. <laughs> I've been yodeling all day in class. That's been hysterical. And I have to say, I have some of the nicest students. They are more concerned. Dr. Paramore, how are you? Is there something we can do for you? I've had more offers of help. Um, they're just really sweet. Um, so, I mean, I, I can see that there's a, probably a boat in my future for a very long time. This year, we're going away in January, and we're um, renting a catamaran okay. to see how that sails. Okay. Um, but it's not like a Hobie cat. It's going to have, like, actually stuff in the hull, like a bed. And uh, so at where the, the uh, tarp would have, or the canvas would have been on a Hobie, mm -hmm. there's actually, that's your living room and your kitchen. And then down in either pontoon is there's actually two bedrooms. Huh. So um, a bedroom here and a bedroom here. So I think I can store yarn over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, it's really an, what we're doing in, um, in January, as I can see for the next several Januarys, is trying out different types of boats, different sizes of boats, um, to see what one could live on. Um, because I can see living on a boat for a while. Yeah. Um, and being up here in the summer and down south in the winter, especially once my school, Manhattan College, uh, has an online undergrad as well as an online graduate degree. Mm -hmm. we, have, we're, we have an online master's degree. We're actually growing an online master's degree, and there's a talk about having a full-fledged online undergraduate degree. So all I need is an Internet um, at that point, and, the, and for them to still want me. Considering I'm teaching four classes in the spring, and oh, by the way, could you do this? That I, I'm not sure that that's a problem. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, so you know, I it I could be teaching online, but I can also be going and sailing and doing all this other stuff, and then doing all this crafty stuff that just really makes my heart sing. Um, I can tell you that there's very few uh, knitting stores down in the Caribbean. Okay. Which I think is short-sighted because you certainly can knit bamboo and you can knit linen and you can knit silk and you can knit cotton and they are not necessarily cold weather things um, and it may be that there's just an overabundance of tourists rather than people who live there all the time that would be going and shopping I'm not quite sure um, obviously this would not stop me <laughs> uh, because one can order all kinds of stuff. I mean, I could order fiber to um, to spin. I can order blank yarn, naked yarn to dye. And that's one of the things I wanted to look at up at Rhinebeck because I saw that there was a mill that actually was advertising that they would create the yarn that you wanted. So I wanted to see what their wholesale prices were, mm. you know, for, make, for the non-wool right, stuff. Right, right, right. Um, I don't think that uh, Elizabeth is, is looking to jump into the dyeing process just yet. And I'm holding off. Mm -hmm. If she's not interested in doing it, I'm not. Dear God, I've got plenty to do myself. Thank you very much. But certainly learning, learning how to dye and getting the, the tonalities that I like means that when I'm off and down God knows where, I could take naked yarn and mm -hmm. do something with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that that makes one, I don't know, feel good about yourself. Um, so a, I keep teasing my class that come the zombie apocalypse, I'll have clothes. Mm. <laughs> so I think we've gone off on another tangent here. I'm sorry. Where would you like to go back to? I don't know. I mean, what, what other benefits are there well, to knitting well, because events? Because I, I found out about this mill right. that's going to be at Rhinebeck. So... One of the other things I'm going and doing this year is actually looking at sources for bare wool. Mm -hmm. um, not bare wool, bare fiber, right. bare, bare yarn, that's the word. Yes. Because it could be cotton yarn, it could be bamboo yarn, that kind of stuff. So I'm looking for sources that should my darling daughter decide that she wants to go and do indie dyeing, mm -hmm. um, that we would have a few places to call and, and to say, okay, we can source what we're interested in doing at these these places um, because I know that we can buy them from 
you know, some online companies, but I'd like to have a little variety if, if possible. So you can find resources right. that you wouldn't necessarily find in other places. That's true. I mean, I, I've learned about a lot of yarn companies through these events um, yeah. and that I probably wouldn't have learned about otherwise. I would have had no clue. Mm. And you know the, that, the wide variety of things that you can, fibers that you can work with, I think is amazing. Um, I think I'm actually um, going to buy one of those silk handkerchiefs that you can oh, yeah. spin out yeah, of yeah, yeah. and then make something out of this year. I think I'm going to tread down that little path. Mm -hmm. that, and never would have occurred to me to do that kind of thing. So it's something I'm going to probably buy on Saturday morning and bring to my spinning class on Saturday afternoon and drive the woman insane. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a different activity for me and a different type of material for me. And it's something um, to learn. So that's a whole different way that silk could be presented. Um, and much like a sock blank, you can then take these these silk. I'm not sure how they make the silk handkerchiefs, but however they make them. I have no you idea. Can then Dye them. You could draw. We could we could go to town in making all kinds of you know um, Hudson uh, school paintings on them. <laughs> um, Turners or constables or we you know we could take some classic painting or painters and and viewpoints of landscapes etc. And you could then repaint, uh, take that flavor and paint them on the handkerchief. Well, pe people do that with sock blanks. I know, but we could do that with, with silk handkerchiefs. Yes. And that would be really different. Yes. Um, so, yeah, we could combine a lot of different things. I think it awakens one's eyes to possibilities. Mm -hmm. Is our producer whispering sweet things over there to us? No. No, she's no, found it. Yeah. Hi. What else? She, she's, yeah, she, she actually started her Rhinebeck sweater on Monday. Well, she'll have it done by Friday, I'm, I'm sure. Yes. She is an incredibly fast knitter. Yes. It's a riot. Yes, so this is... And then at Rhinebeck, they actually have animals. I mean, this is a New York oh, State yeah, yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So, I mean, I so they that. have camelids. Yes, and they have sheep. I love the sheep. They have sheep. And they have bunnies. Yeah. They have the Angora bunnies. Yes, don't um, don't don't remind me. The goats. I'd, I'd, I'd be very tempted to buy one. Oh, well. Then then I could be just like Andy. <coughs> um. Oh oh, uh, Molly. I'm not sure, but she piped up at that. So. Uh, so that means she's gonna jump up here. Right? Okay, so like Molly, I'm sure would have a great fun with the rabbits. Yes, that's the problem. That would she, be a she, problem. She would yes. have she would have a little yeah. bit too much fun. With the rabbit. Yes. And then, yes. Then, there, then we would have no more rabbits. Yes. That's, I'm afraid so. So, you know, there's just, what I like about Rhinebeck is it's it's a state fair. So you have that, you know, cotton candy kind of atmosphere. Yeah. Where you've got the little kids and there's rides and it's, it's much more homespun. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just so enjoyable. It's, it's don't forget, easy. Don't forget the petting zoo. The petting, I mean, it's just comfortable and it's easy and there's, you know, uh, just all kinds of things there. Whereas Vogue Nindy Live is much more specific. Yes. It's very glitzy. Um, you have, you know, the specialty stores from New York that are there, um, like Nitty City. Yeah. And um, Yarn Company and there's one that's on the second floor of a building and I can't remember. String, yes, thank you. Um, and they're there with some of their really high fashion uh, yarns. Um, and, and you don't see that kind of thing at Rhinebeck. Mm -hmm. um, so each, each different locale has their own flavor as to what you're going to see. Um, and I think that makes them each one special. Well, I mean, I, I think you can... Uh, uh, draw an analogy with uh, seeing a, a uh, going to a live concert because mm -hmm. part of it is the experience itself and there's no way you can recreate that experience without actually going. I think that's true. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. And, and to experience, you know, the smells, the sights, sometimes the temperature. Although I'm so lucky, tomorrow's supposed to be 70 degrees. So as I'm like g going elbow deep in this water, at least it'll be 70 degrees. Yeah, I think Saturday is going to be 60. Well, still, that's better than the 30s. What was it last year? It snowed. Yeah, last year it snowed. It was it was insane. I mean, it wasn't supposed to snow, but as I'm standing at the Miss Babs display, I look outside and there's that tree, and I'm going, "That's snow." <laughs> <laughs> I may not be really smart, but that's snow, and I know snow when I see it. So I don't think we're going to see snow this year, so that'll be good. Um, so, it, I mean, we get a variety. Of and, and Vogue, of course, it's all inside. Yes. Um, and right now, the, if you spend the night, the only way to get a decent price ticket is to get, buy the big big tickets. Mm -hmm. um, the big, But I think that they're holding rooms off until the other um, bundles open up because I know in the past I've been able to get a room um, not through them and um, get regular room prices. So I think they've just kind of booked all the regular rooms, what's available right now at the suites. But through the tickets, you can get regular rooms. Um, so I'm just waiting for them to open up, as I said, the smaller bundles so I can then also book a room because we'll be there for a couple nights. Um, and plus, by not going to the dinner, or not going to the cocktail party, not going to the dinner, if there's a podcast or meetup, that would be fun. And then there's also the possibility of going to a show or something like that. I mean, there's so many different things to do in New York. Although I have to say that the speaker this year is Cafe Facet, which I think <clears throat> would be really interesting. And honestly, if they would let me buy a separate dinner ticket for my husband, I would be there. Um, so I think that's something that perhaps the organizers need to consider, that there are situations where there be someone who isn't interested in the marketplace, but is someone who um, is a supporter of someone who vastly supports the marketplace, mm -hmm. um, that you know there's room for that. Because right now, I don't know of any way to get him into the dinner, and I just think that's a shame. What say you? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, I, I think there should be a, a dinner-only ticket. It would be an interesting thing to have. I think it would be. I mean, because the speakers they've had uh, for the past two years um, have been fascinating, absolutely fascinating. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, what else would you like to talk about? Do we need to take this further? Or? No. I mean, certainly the teachers are great. The classes, there's not... Well, there's not enough time in the day mm. to really take all the classes that you want, um, to see some of the animals that are there, to sew the source of the fiber itself, the equipment, the spinning wheels, the, 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 the spindles, the, the looms, and all of that. It's, it's amazing. But it's, it's, a, it's a circus for crafters. Yeah. Well, I think that's all that needs to be said. Do you... And we hope we see you there. Yes, yes. Um, so Because we're going to be there. I'm going to be there three days. Mm -hmm. You're going to be there at least on Saturday. Yes. And, you know, come up and say hi. And, and anything else you need to talk about before we wrap this up? I'm, I'm, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm hoping to keep knitting away. I have found that by uh, last year, one of Miss Babs... Um, Clark's workers, uh, I had mentioned that I had gone over much into working on socks on metal needles, and she had suggested switching to um, wooden needles, and I've done so this year, and I have to say my hands are in much better shape. It may be totally in my head, but um, I, I've been able to keep knitting, so that I'm really pleased with. So you can get some really good advice there, too. Um, that's They don't sell needles, as far as I know, and yet... It was, you know, well-considered advice. And so I, I, I'm very glad to have been able to have a, a discussion with them. <laughs> Molly is just having a grand time over here. Yes, she is. Yeah. So. Okay. I think that's all I can think about. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, thank you for watching our podcast. And... 
As usual, watch out for any penguins or cats or... Small rabbits and yes. birds and yes. everything else that might be scattered around the floor. We'll yes. report on our Rhinebeck adventures the next time. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Thank Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.